But the Prime Minister today has um, said that the Speaker, Mrs Bishop, is on probation over her helicopter ride. Um, can someone on the panel please explain the difference between the previous Speaker, Mr Slipper, Mr Peter Slipper's $900 cab charge error of judgement, and Mrs Bishop's $5,227 flight to a Liberal Party fundraiser? Mark Butler, we'll start with you. Well, <clears throat> um, travel is a part of our job as federal MPs. We're on the road and in the air a fair bit of time. And uh, having robustly enforced travel entitlements, whether it's the use of planes, the use of cars, overnight allowances, is incredibly important to maintain community confidence in the job that we do. And the clearer those entitlements are, I think, the better for all of us. Uh, but this one is not a question of interpretation. Uh, I don't think anyone can argue that it's appropriate to take a helicopter trip for 80 kilometres for, for any purpose, let alone for the purpose of a political fundraiser. So. Um, for the life of me, I can't see the difference. Uh, the Prime Minister said that the Speaker is on probation uh, uh, as of today. Uh, we've written to him to ask exactly what that means, particularly in terms of her continuing to carry out her functions as Speaker, and we await a response. Now, uh, your uh, MP, Pat Conroy, says Bronwyn Bishop should be investigated by the AFP in the same way <coughs> that Peter Slipper was. Is that just him, or is that the Labor Party's position? That's right. And we, and we uh, have written to the AFP seeking that. Now, they've referred the matter back to the Finance Department. It may well be the Finance Department again refers it to the AFP, but the AFP took a pretty rigorous, rigorous approach to the question of Mr Slipper's entitlements, uh, in spite of the fact that Mr Slipper, at a fairly early stage, had offered to repay the several hundred dollars that had been wrongly claimed. Uh, so I think this has got a bit of a way to go yet, but this is a very, very serious matter both in terms of the particular claim that the Speaker made, but also in terms of community confidence in the, uh, uh, in the work of federal politicians. It's been within entitlements now for well, a very long time, as long as I can remember, that the, the triennial conferences of the major parties, I think any recognised political party that set about developing policies that then go to the next election, are recognised within parliamentary entitlements. And it seems to me it's either in or it's out. I mean, our, from my point of view, I think all MPs just want to know what the entitlements are. You know, when you can travel, when you can claim this, when you can claim that, and then get on with doing your job. Uh, and, and it's in no one's interest. It's not in our interest. It's not in the general community's interest to have a blurriness about this. So we you should welcome just a, what the rules a serious are. review, which is what the questioner asked. Well, I, th well, I think that, that's right. I think the one silver lining that comes out of these controversies that happen every several years or so is that there's generally a good review that's undertaken and some better clarification of, of parliamentary and entitlements. And people climb back into their helicopters. Well, and away. then something like a helicopter trip happens right. and you have to do it again.